Assalamu alaikum. Do you ever wake up feeling like you're living the same day again and again and again? Like you're living your life, but you're not really getting anywhere. Like you're not making progress towards your goals. Well, in this video, we're going to cover what are the signs that show that I'm not really getting anywhere in life, if you're ever uncertain. Is it actually possible to turn things around if I am stuck right now? And what habits and parts of my lifestyle I need to change to get unstuck and start making some progress in my life? This first one that shows that you're stuck in life it actually makes you into a coward with no appetite for anything that would really push you forward. If you're avoiding this, then you can really realistically expect to stay in the same position in life for the next few years. But it is, of course, actually pretty easy to fix. When Apple was first developing the iPhone, Steve Jobs was still the CEO. He was known for having extremely like OCD level of attention to detail and high standards for every single product that they put out. So he actually got into the trenches of design and he fought with the designer over one function. And that was making sure that the iPhone only had one button. That front button that used to be there, that's now gone. He was certain in his head that this was essential for his vision of what the iPhone was going to be. And it was actually revolutionary when it came out. But the designers actually thought it was impossible and it's too new. Like no one's doing this. We don't have to put in all the work to get this done. He pushed it forward. He forced them to question what was possible and what wasn't. And the result was a phone that came out and changed the entire industry. And if it was like all the other phones that came out and it was pretty good and it had an app store and all of that, but it still had all those buttons like BlackBerry did, maybe it wouldn't go on to be that leading product that changed the industry and in 2023 made Apple $200 billion. Think about it like this, and this is the point you need to take away. If Steve Jobs had avoided conflict with that designer, would the iPhone be what it was today? And that's the point here. You need to stop avoiding conflict. It might be that you get extra work dumped on you at work that you can't realistically complete by the deadline, but you never push back. It could be that your wife did something you're unhappy with, but you avoid telling her and setting the boundaries just to avoid a fight with her. It could be that your parents are pushing you to marry someone that you don't really want to marry or push you into a career that you're not interested in whatsoever, but you just go along with it because you don't like conflict. So if this point relates to you, then you know from now on you need to pick your battles. Not fight with everyone and everything, but embrace conflict and realize the power in conflict. It created the iPhone, so what can it create for you? When something is important for you and you need to push back, then do it. And bit by bit, of course, you'll get more comfortable with conflict. Now look, bro, you're still young. So of course you haven't unlocked your full potential yet. But because of this trait, you might never unlock your full potential unless you start fighting it and overcoming it. So pay attention to this or you might end up stuck making no progress for the coming year. And of course, I'll tell you how to fix it. Now, study finds did this research that found that 62% of people just prefer to always stay in their comfort zone, never go outside of it. I guess the others also, they'd like to be in the comfort zone, but they're willing to step out sometimes. But 62%, they were not willing to get out of it. And think about it. If you want to make progress in life, you're probably not making that progress because you aren't developing yourself. Whereas the world is developing really rapidly every single day. So if you don't start pushing yourself beyond what your current limits are, you'll be like that 62% and you'll get nowhere. So make a priority for yourself to start challenging yourself and doing new things, things that are not comfortable to you. Challenge yourself by learning something new. Go and take that course that you've been lazy about or procrastinating on. Challenge yourself physically by starting a combat sport or even going to the gym or doing 10,000 steps a day by walking. Challenge yourself mentally and force yourself to focus for one hour straight or to stop procrastinating and just take action. Set high goals and hold yourself to the standard of doing whatever it takes to achieve them. And the best thing about challenging yourself is that it's a cycle. Once you achieve something that you thought was hard, you gain confidence and you start looking immediately for the next challenge. And then it's win after win after win and you start to feel like, yes, I can really do this. It doesn't become a case of what can I do when setting goals. It becomes a case of what goals do I want? And of course I could do it. You know that quote from Mandela? He said, it always seems impossible until it's done. So now go away, think about your goals and think about what comfort zone were you not willing to get out of to get towards that goal and now know that you need to get into that comfort zone. Bit by bit, you need to do it, but you do need to tackle that right away. And when we do these things, we develop ourselves. And when we develop ourselves, we gain new skills and new traits that will not help us just for that goal or for the next year or the next two years. But this is an asset that we have for life. Now, this next thing keeping you stuck 
makes it easy to believe that you're actually doing fine in life and that you're not stuck, ironically. I mean, it's easy to think you're the best when maybe you're just not hanging around with a very successful, highly accomplished crowd. So I ask you, are you actually achieving your potential or are you just comparing yourself to the wrong crowd? giving yourself a false sense of security. You know, Elon Musk back in the day, he started X.com and then he started working on PayPal in the early days. Both of these were in the fiercely competitive industry of online payment. And of course, PayPal came up as this big contender. They were doing really well. And of course, the way the story goes is PayPal was acquired, Elon Musk got a good payout. But the deep lesson here is that those people that were working in PayPal with him, they're now known as the PayPal Mafia. Because people like Reid Hoffman went on to found LinkedIn, which he sold to Microsoft. And Peter Thiel was one of those PayPal mafia who's gone on to be a disruptive force in investing and even beyond. And Elon Musk, of course, because he was one of those, he went on to found Tesla and SpaceX. So the lesson here is surround yourself by competition, whether that's within your team, like Elon Musk had with Reid Hoffman and Peter Thiel, or like how they were in industries that were competitive, online payments, and then Elon Musk went into cars. How hard is that? And he went into space. How hard is that? But he wasn't avoiding competition. He was competitive. And that's what you need to develop to get unstuck. So develop this spirit. Have this discontentment for the state that you're in or that the world is in and fight. Fight against Shaitan because of what he's doing to your brothers and sisters. Fight against other enemies. Fight against yourself and how you could do so much better, but you're not achieving it. Have this competitiveness and fight against the forces out there. Okay, if you avoid this next one, then it's a really true sign that you're not really getting anywhere in life and you're stuck right now and you need to do something about it. This is something that I struggled with. Maybe I still struggle with it. Who knows? I think a lot less now, alhamdulillah. But when I was in university, I really kept to myself. I used to have a lot of friends in school. I was like one of the popular kids and everyone wanted to be my friend, but they didn't get too close. They were just like acquaintances and they just wanted to be within proximity of me to get that benefit of status or whatever it was. But I really didn't see any benefit to that. Alhamdulillah, I didn't really feed my ego or anything. I went to uni and I just stuck my head down. I also wasn't used to mixing with these types of people from all different countries that I never mixed with in the past. Not to mention everything was in a foreign language to me, a new language at least. One that I wasn't as native speaker in French. I used to avoid people even to the level of when I used to go from my dorms to my gym, you could just walk through the nice scenic park. But what I did was I went in the underground car park to the gym just to avoid meeting people. And what I told myself is I wanna get on with stuff. I wanna be productive. I don't wanna be held back by chit-chatting to people. But eventually and naturally, I started to feel lonely. I didn't know this in my head, but when I made a Twitter account, I discovered Twitter and I started kind of getting addicted to Twitter. I realized at some point that I was actually lonely and I was dealing with that by going on Twitter a lot. So friendship, community, good companionship, it's something that you can't really replace. Even someone as kind of antisocial as me, I couldn't avoid it. I ended up trying to scratch that itch by going on Twitter, whereas I could have had real friends in real life and met up with them to do cool stuff, but I didn't. And this is something that a lot of young men fall into is that they want to stick by themselves. They want to be that Sigma male. They want to do, but the reality is, especially as Muslims, we should know that we're better in groups. We're better in packs. There's time to put your head down and just work. But every week, make sure you meet up with people. Make sure you have people encouraging you, pushing you. Go to the gym with people. Do this walk with people, trekking, whatever it is. You can have your solo missions, of course, but you need some missions every now and then to be with other people, especially if those people, they're productive, they're ambitious as well, and they can push you. That's really what you need. And that's what we have at the front row, of course. So avoiding community in general is a bad habit to develop, especially as a Muslim. They offer you practical advice and support. And let's be real, they offer you emotional support, even if you don't realize it yourself. They also connect you with like-minded brothers and even mentors that'll push you 10 years ahead of where you would be if you were alone. Not to mention the benefits of general networking, learning from each other, getting opportunities from each other. All of this can only happen if you're part of a community. So if you're already in a position where you're kind of part of a community, a good network of people, then make sure you take advantage of it and you really embrace it. And if you're not, then try and put yourself in a situation where you can build communities, you can build your own network by meeting good brothers who are also ambitious and on the dean like you. So go to the message regularly and get to know people there. Go to an MMA gym. Go and start volunteering at an Islamic charity or something. Get involved in places where people like you spend time. And you don't even have to do that cringy thing of networking and hey, and here's my card and 
do you want to take my number? You don't have to do any of that. Just go to those places where those people are and eventually you'll make connections with people. You know me, I don't do this too much, but when I do, it will only be one out of 10 people that I really connect with. But I know as soon as I've spoken to them for 10 minutes, I know this is my guy. I've got his number. That's the guy I'm calling later. I've got all the other nine guys' numbers. Maybe I'll meet them here and there on eight, on a this and that. But that's the guy I'm going to connect with. That's cool. That's enough. That's enough. You don't need too many people. But just sticking to yourself and avoiding people, that is really going to hold you back. Now, if you're trying to get unstuck in life, then it's very likely that you're looking to do something like get married maybe or start a business. And for those, I've got two playlists, one for each. So just click on the playlist right now and start watching all the videos I've put together on all the best things that I know on those topics. Check them out right now and let me know how you find them in the comments. Salam alaikum.